Hey everyone, Davey here. You're noticing something a little bit different. That's right, the microphone is literally just inches away from me. Got a brand new little mic stand to kind of mount it here on the side of my dresser and then it's hooked up to my microphone. If you guys are bothered by this in any kind of way, shape, or form, just please let me know. I know it changes a little bit of the aesthetic of the video, but they always say that if you want better quality audio, the microphone actually has to be closer to the source of sound as opposed to having like the most high maintenance, high quality microphone even though I would still wouldn't mind upgrading a, a microphone because trust me that Samson USB microphone that ex is exclusive to Best Buy of course I mind that one especially if I am to do some game streaming later on in the future but for now I'll settle for the blue snowball ice micro microphone it's hooked up to this mic stand and that's kind of the idea of where my videos are going to go from this point forward so I'm using this video to kind of test out this l brand new little look to the video where it's going to for the most part be the same but the microphone is going to be about this close to my mouth so that the audio is a little bit better but it's in the way here and also on the downside you're not going to be able to see my cool ass shirts so if this bothers you in any kind of way please let me know I, otherwise I'll gladly move it out of the way I can easily go like this but you can notice that the audio does kind of change a little bit I could always lower it down here at the bottom so it's up to you guys it really is up to you guys because I know I've been doing videos a certain type of way so changing it up a little bit could you know could distress some of you so please let me know in the comments and I'll take all of your guys's creative input uh, thusly I don't know exactly what that means but this is what I'm gonna be doing for the meantime and you could possibly expect my Ant-Man and the Wasp review to kind of be in this uh, form so without further ado let's get on with what exactly is the point of this video I did want to do yet another collection video for a set of video games for a particular console except this is not a console this is actually a handheld a handheld that is sadly being kind of being kind of thrust into the sunset of its life cycle, especially after the release of the Nintendo Switch, which I just so happen to own myself. But, uh, you know me, if I have a backlog of video games, whether they be on some of the more current consoles or handhelds like the Nintendo Switch, which just happens to fall in the field of both, I still have a soft spot for going to back to some of my old consoles or older handhelds so that there's certain games that I know that ever so often I watch a clip of uh, either on YouTube or somewhere and I just go, man, I really, really want to play that thing again. And I'm just not going to turn away from jumping over to that old console just because I have the brand new one. And I have done that recently actually with the PS3. I went back to my PS3 and tried to get as much as my backlog done as I possibly could. One of which, one of those games actually happened to be a game that I'm currently kind of going through the gameplay footage of to do a in-depth classic review. Hence, purchasing this mic stand. I definitely wanted to do that for the Let's Play clips of that game. So look forward to that. In the meantime, however... Considering that I was thinking about Nintendo Switch and what games I could kind of put more on my Nintendo Switch, I, I thought to myself, what about that prior ha handhold that I had? And did I manage to beat any of those games? That brings me to my collection video of the Nintendo 3DS, most specifically the Nintendo 3DS XL. You can see right here the family of handhelds from that particular line that Nintendo was really proud of when they announced that you can now experience 3D gaming without the use of glasses. And they were very proud of that technology, but it was a little bit of, this, of a strain on certain gamers' eyes. So that's when they released the XL line that was with bigger screens, with bigger, much more you know like there was a better feel to the overall console and I knew that when I saw it I'm like that's the more upgraded version and I'm gonna get that especially in the red color so that's precisely what I did with my Nintendo 3DS XL it's right here now of course you notice that it's not exactly red that's because it does have the shell over it and I'm gonna try my best to remove it without damaging my handheld and I'm rather nervous to doing so but here let's hope that I can do it without damaging it and I'm really really nervous oh here we go I think I got it and slides for okay there we go slide forward remove the top plate and then here we see and I haven't seen this in years to be quite honest but here's the top of my 3ds Excel and there's a humongous chunk of residue there that's disgusting Kind of tried not to put that close to my mouth but you see there's a little bit of residue there but otherwise that's the red 3DS XL that was proud of its 3DS glassless technology 
and then there's the inside of it with the D-pad, the rather controversial circular pad here that you can kind of move around that was meant to be the replacement for a joystick, and then the face buttons over here, as well as the power button, face buttons, actually I just accidentally turned it on, nifty. And then up here was the thing that really appealed to me is the 3D slider, meaning you don't have to play games in 3D, you can always turn it off, so you can have it off like it is right there, you can kind of hear a little bit of the console audio right there. So with my volume, my volume slide is right over here. So I can turn on the volume. High in the volume, you have a little bit of ambient noise going on right there. But you can always turn on the 3D feature by grabbing the slider, pressing it up, and you can change the magnitude of the 3D to be all the way up, all the way down, or somewhere in between. And I always thought that was actually kind of cool about the 3DS XL. I got kind of ashamed of myself knowing that I never put the amount of time that I probably should have into this console because I don't know I would just constantly be getting getting more and more games on my home consoles here with my PS4 my Xbox one and there was uh, minus a couple of titles there was nothing that really made me like super energetic about coming home to playing my 3ds Excel until now that to be com completely honest the switch has kind of revitalized my hunger for mobile gaming especially now that I travel a lot whether it be to school or to work since I work about an hour away from here and ever so often I either get out early from work during the day but it's right at the peak of traffic hour and I check on Google Maps and it says right there that's actually instead of taking me an hour like it's supposed to it's gonna take me an hour and 45 minutes maybe even two hours to get me home so instead of trying to jump into that traffic where I know I can only just do stop, go, stop, go on my gas pedals. I'd rather just stay in my car. Granted, it's 105 degrees on average these days. So I'd rather go to an nearby Starbucks, get myself a coffee, and play something portable. Whether it be on my Switch, and the lights are dimming down on me. I don't know why. It's probably the fireworks having something to do with the power lines. I don't know. It is nearly 4th of July. It practically is 4th of July by the time this video goes up. So there is that. So if in case you guys notice that the electricity goes down here, then that's practically what that is. And now that the Switch has revitalized my kind of grab-and-go type of style of gaming, I feel like it's time to jump back to the 3DS XL and try to get an awful lot of my backlog games I have not played done on this handheld. And without further ado, that was my 3DS XL, got the red one, and now let's jump into what exactly the games that I have for the Nintendo 3DS XL are. Now, the sad thing is that I think an awful lot of video game analysts, experts, journalists, and enthusiasts will tell you that it's a little bit of a sad fact, but the Nintendo 3DS, or the Nintendo handheld market during the time of the Wii, the Wii U, uh, and even the beginnings or so of the Switch, wasn't exactly the strongest. I mean, there were some really strong, really powerful titles. It's just that the frequency that they would be released in just wasn't exactly 100% there. And unfortunately, I think it is a little too little too late. Even though it's still kind of surprising how much more the, the Nintendo is currently supporting the 3DS, even with it, the death of it being kind of right around the corner after the, the success of the Nintendo Switch. Um, but, but that's not to say that they're not going to give it at least some form of a swan song. I mean, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is coming out on the 3DS still, simultaneously with the Switch release. So it's kind of like they're softly doing away with the 3DS, and I wouldn't mind kind of finishing up this backlog of games by then so that then I can primarily focus on the Switch, just like Nintendo is planning, planning to do so. So that sounds like a plan to me. So here is my stack of 3DS games. I unfortunately don't have any digital 3DS games, so this is actually it for my collection. But I think it's a really good assortment, if I say so myself, it's a really good assortment of the 3DS games that I think anybody who is, I think, possibly barely getting a 3DS, whether it be a hand-me-down or a used one from GameStop or whatever, should need, should need to have in their collection or should at least play at least once. So first one is one of the staples in the collection that I think came out around the same time as the 3DS, if not shortly thereafter, was Super Mario 3D Land. Wasn't a fan about how they made the case entirely red. I don't know, I just like the default white, and it just kind of bugs me that I have all these white cases, and then 
Super Mario 3D Land is the only one without that, and it just has the red, so it just kind of sticks out a little bit like a sore thumb. But nevertheless, a really fun, enjoyable game that makes you feel like you might have beaten, and then it just continues that trope of Mario games where there's an alternate version of the pathway that you had and it's like more worlds and more coins to collect so there's some endless fun to ha to be had with Super Mario 3D Land uh, it's just that if you have already played Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U or if you already managed to have gone to Switch and have played Super Mario Odyssey 3D Land is going to feel a little bit like a watered down version but still one that feels just right in the palm of your hands so there is that one next is a game that I knew I had to get for the 3DS, but that's only because I just couldn't bring myself to get a Wii U solely for this game. Just like everybody was feeling that at the beginning of the Switch cycle with the release of Breath of the Wild, and they were all thinking like, "Oh, I don't want to spend $400 for just a Zelda game." That's pretty much that's it's uh, 400 bucks for Zelda. But at this point, I think we can say a little different, and. Uh, sadly, I don't think I can say that for at least this version of this particular game. Like, I still don't think to myself, oh, I could have gone to the Wii U version. Nope. Especially now, after the, after the announcement of the next iteration in the series coming out later this year for the Switch. Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 3DS. Not protesting against the, the tarnishness of... The Wii U with that fucking gamepad and just the way controlled, or at least the, the the way that they were kind of treating that console. I was just like, should I get a Wii U? I'm just getting it for Smash Brothers. There's a couple of other titles, but I don't know. And now I feel like my patience was rewarded because so many of those games are being ported over to the Switch. And having a portable Smash Brothers got me through an awful lot of times where I just didn't know what to do with myself. I had to wait for something. And knowing that I had a brawler that I'm very familiar with, like Smash Brothers, on the 3DS was really cool. Granted, it doesn't play as awesome as a console version of Smash Brothers does, considering that I was just a big, um, big, big fan of the original Smash Brothers, Smash Brothers Melee. I'll be first to confess, I did not play Brawl, but that was because I just couldn't get behind the Wii because of the motion controls, and I skipped out on the Wii. I skipped out on the Wii U, but you can bet your ass I am not skipping out on Smash Bros. Ultimate, and I'm glad that I at least settled for the 3DS version because I still managed to kind of dip myself into that, into that, um, into that pool of this version of the 2014 Smash Brothers, even with the brand new art style with like the cell shading going on, I thought that that was a cool creative move, but I will admit that a little bit on the frame rate or the graphical fidelity fidelity of Smash Brothers, especially taking so many characters that are all over the screen and then putting them on a very tiny screen, didn't exactly work for the game, but at least knowing that it was a portable Smash Brothers was awesome. The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, I think this was the first, I might be wrong, I may be completely wrong but I think this was the first Zelda title on a 2DS or 3DS system you know with dual screens not DS because I know we had a couple of ones like uh, you know like one of those cartoony ones but this is one that felt like a built from the ground up type of Zelda game that was solely exclusive on that console on 2DS or 3DS with its own art style its own direction especially the whole function of being able to kind of flatten yourself down a la Paper Mario except here it's more like paintings up against a wall where you got Link being literally in between walls and also in between worlds where you got an, a Hyrule versus admittingly a terribly named low rule but it was still cool Zelda uh, experience on a portable console. My only criticism is that it does follow Zelda tropes in a way where I'm like, well, if somebody were to argue that it's kind of a remake of some past Zelda games, can't exactly fight them too badly, but at least they copied all the best things about those prior Zelda games with a brand new, brand new little artistic twist with the world building and the worlds in between that Link would fall himself, would fall into himself, and it was cool to experience that, especially with some of the the features that would actually play really well on the 3 D 3D functionality of the 3DS. Next came a game that I will admit I got primarily because of the hype, because so many people thought that this was an essential game to get on the 3DS, and me personally, I it's a game that I gave up quickly within a week. And by a week, I don't mean a week straight, I mean I will play it here and there when I was off school or off work or whatever, and it was by the end of that week from starting it that I was just like, I gotta move on. Animal Crossing New Leaf. 
this was my first Animal Crossing game. And some of you who are big Animal Crossing fans might say that that might have been my first mistake because maybe there's there's a different entry in the series that is a bit more starter friendly. But if this is what Animal Crossing is all about, then it might just not be for me. Because I thought to myself, this could be one of those games that I can kind of just lose myself into. Because there's no beginning, middle, and end. You just, you're just you just dude, you're going around meeting people or creating things. And kind of like a simulator, only with these like little widgets and gadgets and little, you know, little quirks that they throw in in this universe of Animal Crossing. But for some reason, it just managed to not appeal to me. And I'm a little sad about that, but hey, who knows? Maybe there's a different version of Animal Crossing that could suit my interests that's, like, under a different name. If you guys have any suggestions, please, 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 please let me know. Now, before I kind of go on, I do want to see if I can list some that I have already played before I get into the games that I have yet to play in my backlog here. And I guess I only have two, to be quite honest. Pokemon Y, my first Pokemon game in several, several, several years ever since Game Boy Advance. I'm not kidding, Game Boy Advance. This was it since my Game Boy Advance days for Pokemon, or even GameCube days since Pokemon. I wanted something that felt a little bit much more accessible, and at this point I was a little overdone with just how many Pokemon they have added to the library, but there was something about the gameplay mechanics and just the way that they were kind of meshed the old with the new in Pokemon Y that I found appealing, and I actually did for some time, it's just that so much was coming out that I actually started a quest, and about 10 or so hours in, I gave up on it, not because the game was bad, but because there was just so much else coming out, but... Let it be known that I am intrigued enough to at least start a new quest from the beginning, from scratch, and actually remember, because honest to God, I can't even remember what Pokemon I got. I cannot remember what type of Pokemon I actually ended up with, and since it's been so long, I might as well just start a brand new quest, brand new Pokemon, and actually stick with it, because I am a Pokemon fan, and so far all the mechanics and all the different little things that they've included here and why are still appealing to me. I just want to be able to stick with it a little bit better. And I definitely want to do that before we start to get more and more core Pokemon games coming out on the Switch. Beginning with kind of, sort of, Let's Go Pikachu. Even though Let's Go Pikachu revealed something about itself that, to me, makes me dubious as to whether or not I'm going to pick it up. But that's a video for another day. And then the last game that I actually did play here in my 3DS library is actually a game that I played 20 years ago? <laughs> yeah, uh, honest to God, 20 years ago is actually the game that I played this for the first time. And then replaying it on the 3DS, I thought to myself, this is great. This is actually rather terrific. And that's, of course, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It was so great that this is the game that I let my girlfriend borrow. And it's finally back in my hand after, I think, almost a year. Not only the game, but also the 3DS Excel, Excel handheld itself. That's my first time touching it. In that amount of time. And that's because she's kept it this far. And that's also because. She's still stuck on the goddamn. Fire breathing dragon. At the end of the fire temple. And I don't know if she's ever going to go back. But she's going to have to wait. Until I beat Pokemon Y. <laughs> but she'll be fine. She doesn't have long to wait. And plus when I'm done with that. We can alternate between her playing the 3DS. And I can play the Switch. However, that won't exactly be the case if I manage to also dive into these backlog of sealed 3DS XL games or 3DS games. First one is one that I knew I had to get on sale, but it's the gameplay mechanics still intrigued me nonetheless, and plus it's Zemur Zim Zelda. Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, a little worried about the gameplay mechanics for this one, but they intrigued me, but I'm just worried that over time, you know, it's kind of like that push and pull uh, thing going on where you're playing with like three characters stacked on top of each other, and technically speaking, you can play by yourself, but it's encouraged to be played more with other people that have a 3DS XL. What's cool is that you don't need to have three game cartridges. You could just have one of them have the game, and then the others can just down download. Do the thing called download play? No, not all, not all. Note that not all content can be access. I don't know, but you can share it with other people, and they can. You guys can play through the game co-op style, and that's neat. But I don't like other people, so. Let's hope it's fun just by myself, because I can do myself just fine. That didn't sound right. 
Uh, still very interested in the uh, dungeons and the puzzle solving. Mainly the puzzle solving. I think it's what's attractive about this because if you're looking for a super deep Legend of Zelda story and mythos, I don't think it's necessarily found here, but it's in the right place with the 3DS XL. In fact, it's even borrowing the Wind Waker art styles, and that's actually a, an art style that I've, I'm very fond of, but it, it's definitely one that feels just right being on the 3DS XL or 3DS. Next is a game that once, just like the Ocarina of Time, I played years and years ago, but knowing that it got a brand new fresh coat of paint on it with the 3DS and also with some brand new uh, mechanics and maybe some new included Pokemon, of course, yes, we're jumping back into Pokemon. This time it's for one game out of the entire uh, plethora of Pokemon games that actually ended up being my favorite, and that's what kind of warranted me purchasing this, I guess you could say, remake of said game. Pokemon Omega Ruby. Really, really love Omega Ruby. And I like that they're throwing in new mechanics like the ability for Pikachu to cosplay. But still, it's Pokemon Ruby. You got the map, you got the Pokemon, you got the different encounters with the gym leaders. I was a huge fan of Ruby, so seeing its iteration on 3DS XL, or 3DS, I keep saying that. Uh, I definitely wanted to pick it up, especially if it went on sale, which I believe it did. I just haven't had a chance to come across it, but I will do so eventually. Next is a game that's kind of a remake, but more technically and officially is actually a sequel that found itself on a handheld, and that is Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Uh, for some reason, they didn't manage to put the side of the in between these two words but they wanted to avoid copyright in order to do so and as you can tell this is actually the Nintendo Select Edition which means that this is kinda like one of the greatest hits on the 3DS and I'm looking forward to playing it I remember playing a handful of Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube and thinking that it was really fun but I never got a chance to uh, beat it now knowing that not only the original Luigi's Mansion is coming through the 3DS through uh, eShop or Maybe physically. I don't know if it's coming physically, but I know for a fact it's coming through eShop. And playing that back to back with this, I think that could make for a really fun time. And I think it's about time that Luigi got their own game. It's just a shame that he's not getting a sequel. He's kind of getting a port of the GameCube one along with this. But at least it will be somewhat of a brand new experience for me. Next are two games. They're actually going to be tackled on the same go because they're part of the same franchise they're different games but some of you may argue that they are kind of spinning their wheels but still I'm hoping that I can kind of follow the RPG mechanics because they do appeal to me somewhat and they could be really really fun but at the same time I'm very nervous that I could be so so wrong and I'm talking about the Fire Emblem games specifically Fire Emblem Awakening and Fire Emblem Conquest which are the two games that I got of course I got them at I think half off each of these you know there was like a sale going on where buy one fire emblem you get the second one half off or something like that I don't know I can't remember but I know that that's what I got them f uh, got them at because I knew I was gonna jump into fire blind fire emblem blind at full price but I knew that I wanted to at least dip my toe in the franchise because it's been around for so long and I figured that it's between that and Final Fantasy and there's something that tells me that fire emblem will be a little bit more accessible than Final Fantasy because at this point Final Fantasy can go fuck off I'm sorry not because I hate it but because there's just so many of them that it's just really hard if anything I'll probably just do 15 I actually have 15 for the PS4 only because again it does look like it tells its self-contained story but I know for a fact that there's going to be some shit in there that I'm just not going to recognize or realize or whatever so Moving on, another Pokemon game, only this time it's one of the more recent ones that's brand new to the series and it looks appealing, but I've heard some mixed things from some diehard Pokemon fans, most specifically Patrick Gertz, formerly from Double Toasted. It's a shame he had to leave. He wasn't a huge fan, but hey, who knows? It might speak differently to me, and that's Pokemon Sun. You notice that whenever it comes to Pokemon games, I always go for like the the red themed one, so Pokemon Y, Pokemon Ruby, Pokemon Fire Red when that came out, and now Pokemon Sun, only because that's my favorite color, and that's always the versions that I go for. So the next version of Pokemon Y, I mean not Pokemon Y, Pokemon whatever it ends up being, I don't know, but Pokemon Sun, some more Pokemon, some of which look a little uh, questionable. But we got Pikachu in there once again, some more gym trainers, a brand new adventure, and I got it on a discount, so what can you do? And then lastly, leaves me with what could be 
I think the most controversial addition to my collection, only because of what I'm about to say about it, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask in 3D. Reason why I knew I had to add this to my collection is because I never played Majora's Mask. I have played numerous amount of times. I think that's kind of redundant. Ocarina of Time. But I never sunk my teeth into Majora's Mask. Admittingly, it kind of weirded me out at the beginning. And by at the beginning, I mean back in 98, 99, 2000, whenever that came out. On the N64, I could have gotten it like through a birthday or a Christmas for my parents. But there was just something weird about the art style, especially that freaky ass looking moon. And just the way it was tackling like the concept of time and the masks and all that. That, I don't know, it just made me go... I think I want to go and play Star Fox or whatever was next on the N64 and maybe skip on it. But since then, I've I've heard from so many people say that this is actually one of the most innovative versions of Legend of Zelda out there and definitely one of the most underrated games. Some of which from some folks that I follow, some peers or people on podcasts that I really listen to and really follow their advice, actually prefer over Ocarina of Time. So when I heard them say that, I'm like, all right, as soon as they make a remake... I'll, whether it be on the GameCube, which I think that ship has sailed. I think there was a port, but it wasn't exactly a remake. Or on a handheld or something, I am there. As soon as they announced Majora's Mask for the 3DS, I knew it was there. I got it. Unfortunately, still in the cellophane. But rest assured that the more free time that I got coming up in the next few months, the more I'm going to be look, looking forward to jumping into Zelda and I'm really, really hoping that the concept of time and the way that they kind of bend around the rules of the traditional, conventional Legend of Zelda that even Link Between Worlds was kind of criticized even by me can maybe kind of appeal to me. So that's the last game I have on my collection for 3DS Excel games or 3DS games. I'm sorry, I know I keep on mentioning that. And even though it's not as numerous or as abundant as my PS3 or PS4 backlogs and it's kind of on par with that of Xbox, at least knowing that I can take these games with me on the go on a very fond handheld, a very sturdy handheld like the 3DS or 3DS Excel in this case was... It makes me very happy, and I feel like I need to at least wrap it up with this console by the end of this year before we really kick into high gear with the library of games we're going to be brought forward on the Switch, especially next year with possible uh, incarnations, and there's fireworks going off outside, of various other games like Metroid Prime when that rolls around, or more ports over from previous uh, versions on the Wii and the Wii U. In the meantime, though, if you find me playing on the 3DS XL, there's a reason for that. And that's because there was still a really strong, albeit somewhat short, library of games on that system. Now, I have to leave you guys from this video because there's fireworks going off all over the place. And I need to cancel this video now (laughs) because now they're really, really getting on my nerves. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys have in your 3DS or 2DS even library post in the comments down below what are you guys' favorite memories with this handheld and what was your favorite game playing on the handheld what type of experiences did you have please post them in the comments below make sure you support the video by hitting the like and share button and again post in the comments if you guys don't mind having the mic here in the front for better quality audio but at the same time it's kind of in the way here in the video so whatever suits your guys' fancy let me know in the comments make sure you like and share Subscribe for more videos coming soon, including my review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I'll see you guys all on the next one. Take care. I gave my initial review back in 2014. I think you can still check it out on this uh, on this channel. And feel free to do so after watching this review to see the comparisons. Because I can't even fucking remember what I said. Except that it kind of somewhat mirrors of, uh, about what I'm about to mention. Except here I'm about to break it down scene by scene. Alright, so we got the studio logos as I remove the tends to have we got the columbia logo check marvel logo check oh this one's a new one i didn't know they were doing a landscape whoa 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 whoa. that's not a it's not a logo okay that was fucking weird